Hello, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design. Uh, this is uh, yet another drawing live stream. And uh, today I'm going to be uh, working on um, a job, actually it's a continuation of a job I uh, I worked on earlier. Um, basically I'm doing a series of uh, illustrations for ads for a friend of mine who runs a pet crematorium. Uh, in case you don't know what a crematorium is, it is a, um, it's a facility where uh, um, the deceased, their bodies are cremated into ashes and then given back to the family to be uh, placed wherever the family wishes to place them. Put them in a jar, put them on a mantle, spread them in the ocean or some other place that the family sees fit. Um, but my friend, uh, who's always worked in sort of the uh, mortuary business, he, he majored in mortuary science. Um, but he, uh, previously he worked for a uh, for funeral homes and he owned a, a funeral home himself. But then he branched out into uh, into the pet industry. Um, and it turns out that there are, there's quite a need um, for, uh, for pets to be cremated by their owners. And because, uh, you know, people tend to treat their pets like family. And uh, of course, at least in America, and uh, often like their own children. So um, my friend has found it to be a very, um, very lucrative business. And also, um, you know, my friend has a very, not necessarily dark sense of humor, but he, he he definitely he definitely has a good amount of gallows humor. So um, so he is always in terms of promoting his his business. He's always had tends to look at it from the funny side. Um, you know, previous uh, sort of ad campaigns he had um, have been things like putting the name of his business on. A, a book of matches because he, he cremates bodies. So he would, he would hand out matchbooks with his pre crematorium business ID on it and use that as, uh, hey, Evan Von Scriver, how are you doing? Uh, Evan said, something feels off. What feels off, Evan? I yell to be more um, specific. Um, so my friend would, would, would uh, you know, do, do self promotional materials that would uh, sort of poke fun at, at, at his business. Um, like handing out matches with the information on it. Um, Evan Von Scriver says, what's missing? I don't know. Ah, Evan Von Scriver is uh, pointing out that um, he, uh, <laughs> earlier this week, he, he gave me, uh, he, Evan Von Scriver is doing good. I'm glad to hear it. And he, he's, being, he's being my Jimmy Cricket right now, being my conscious, because he's been uh, trying to pound into me ways to uh, better promote this channel, uh, Illustration by Design, my drawing channel. Um, one way is what I always, what I always do, which is ask people to one subscribe to share out this video, uh, to the internet, um, you know, share it to uh, Twitter and Facebook and, uh, Instagram, let people know that I'm online, uh, ask people to, um, to, uh, uh hit the bell for notifications. But one thing that Evan Von Scriver keeps on hammering to me, which I keep on forgetting is to use hashtags within my description. And that will also help promote my videos because um, when when uh, people look for the hashtag in, U in YouTube search and then my video will theoretically pop up. So I have to think of some hashtags to talk um, to, um, uh, to help with the algorithm of YouTube so that people can find this video. So hashtags that I'm gonna use are, um, I don't know, what should I use? This is a drawing live stream. So I will use drawing, which is good. Um, I will use um, what else? Charles Adams. I don't know how many people are going to be hashtagging Charles Adams. I know what I'll use. I will use someone who has died recently because I'll talk about them as well. I will use Rudger Hauer. How do you spell Hauer? A A U E R. Rudger Hauer. And um, let's see, what else can I use? Um, hold on one second, youtube.com. 
because I, fortunately, lost the chat. Get back to where I was. Uh, come on. Here we go. Bam. Let's go. Um, hey, Charlie McNeilson's here. Hey, Charlie, how are you doing? Good seeing you. Um, Adam's family. Do you think, I don't know, I think people are going to, I saw someone talking about Adam's family comic on Twitter. Um, I'll, uh, I'll put the Adam's, Adam's family as, as well. Um, not that I think anyone's really going to be looking it up, but Adam's family. There we go. Bam. And it's a. All right. There we go. Let's see if it shows up. Refresh. Bam. There it is. In blue. Okay. Cool. Um, so, as I was saying, um, my friend has always had a sort of a dark sense of humor when it comes to his business, which is uh, running a pet crematorium. So, he asked me to do a series of illustrations for a series of ads that he is uh, planning on putting out in, uh, I guess, newspapers and magazines. I've already done one, um, and uh, let me show it to you. I think you may or may not have seen it already. Hold on. Um, <laughs> I can find where I am supposed to be. Let's see. There we go. YouTube. Um, oh, 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 oh. Uh, dead. Burn it. Did I close it already? Hold on. There we go. Bam, share. There we go. That is my um, the first drawing I did for for my friend. Um, and this is probably the the the, the sort of the most uh, boring of the four. Um, it's not really funny. Um, you know, it's not really ha ha funny. Um, the other ones are going to be more obviously humorous. Um, this one. He wanted to be more sort of a traditional just funeral scene. But um, the other ones are going to be sort of more in the vein of what Charles Adams um, used to do. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Charles Adams is, who I sort of named this, this live stream after, um, Charles Adams is the creator of the Adams family. He was a, um, a very popular um, cartoonist in the 30s. Well, yeah, from the 30s until he died. He died in the 80s, late 80s. So for 50 years, he was a very well-known cartoonist. He did he did cartoons for the New Yorker, um, Collier's, a lot of high-end magazines um, for uh, you know in, here in here in America um, for decades. So I wanted to do the illustrations for these ads, sort of in that same vein. Um, let me get back to hmm, let's see. Pick it out like this one, the one that was originally on the screen at the beginning of the live stream. This one here, um, you know, we let's see if we pretend that everyone see if it makes it bigger. Um, you know, as you can see, yeah, this guy here at a patent office and he's handing over a death ray, and the guy from the patent office is trying out the death ray on passers by. And then comments, uh, death ray fiddlesticks. <laughs> Why well, doesn't even slow them up? You know, so it's, it's very sort of a macabre, dark humor type strip. Um, and so these ads that I'm doing for my friend are going to be sort of in that vein. Um, so, um, Evan Von Scriber says, uh, is that cat one finished? No, Evan, I'm going to start that one tonight. That the one I'm doing, the one that I described earlier. I'm going to be sketching that out right now. So that's what this live stream is for. I'm going to be try, I'm probably going to try to sketch out all, all the remaining three um, cartoons that are left. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll at least do the layouts for them. And then I'll, I'll uh, on the, in another live stream, I'll, I'll be light boxing them and uh, doing the, the finished drawings in those. So because um, I'm going to have to do the finished drawings on my yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to do them physically as opposed to on the computer, like the sketches I'm going to do. So, um, so I'll, I'll be live streaming that uh, in a, a different method. It won't be through uh, at least this this manner of hangouts. Anyway, um, let's see. Three people are watching, but there's only one thumbs up. Why is that? 
everybody, everybody, please give this video a thumbs up and uh, share it out to everyone else so people know that I am going to be drawing. Um, let me see here. Let me close that. Um, let me get a fresh sheet of paper. And actually, let me first close every other dopey window that I have open. Hide others because it's extremely confusing for me to have every window on my screen open at the same time. Let me open up Photoshop. There we go. Um, I'm still here, even though the screen's black. Don't worry. I haven't gone anywhere. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, Charlie McNeilson says, two thumbs for me. I only see one thumbs up, though. Oh, well. That's okay. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, so, let me get started on these sketches. Um, I gotta switch, up, switch out the window. Google Hangouts, so I can see where it is. Switch it. Application window. Boom. Share. There we go. Get back to here. Um, Evan Von Scarver says, have you checked your analytics since we left, since we started Operation Hashtag? Um, I have, it hasn't necessarily improved them. Um, I mean, I can look at it again right now, but I mean, I, I, I tend to check it every day. Um, and I haven't really noticed that big of a difference. Um, hold on. I did go back and add hashtags to my um, previous videos, at least some of them. So I'm not sure how that how that's improved it, how much it's improved it, but maybe it will over time. Um, the last one I did, the Blue Mamba one, it had it had a good it's had a good number of um, of, of views. But it's um, it's not extremely it's not much higher than previous videos without the hashtags. It's I have um, seventy three views on the Blue Mamba one, twenty one likes. Um, but other live streams where I don't have hashtags, I've also had similar views and likes. So I, it could, I, I, what I'm saying is I don't think it hurt it. So, um, and it may, it may have helped, but, but the, the, the number of views and likes for, for that video and, and the other videos I've used the hashtags with, um, I'd have to say it's not conclusive right now because it, it, they're they're similar to what I've had in the past. So does that make sense? Um, has impressions or click through changed? Asked Evan. Um, let me check. Uh, trying to find one that. Let's see. Come on. Mm. Reach viewers, look through rates, impressions. Okay, 29% um, impressions, 3.6% click through rate. For I think this is a live stream without the um, without the hashtags. Let's see. I apologize for sort of this boring stuff. I just want to. Sort of check to make sure um, it's working. Uh, actually, I should probably do this like off. I should probably should not be doing this during an actual live stream because it, it is kind of boring. 
and you guys can't really see what I'm doing. So I'll, I'll check this stuff later on. Um, but uh, Evan, I do appreciate um, the suggestions, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll check it later on um, when I have time or rather when I'm not live streaming so that I'm not boring everyone who's sort of, you know, hanging out expecting me to draw. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Evan gets a thumbs up. He understands. Thank you, Evan. I appreciate it. Um, pop out chat so I can see what people are saying. In case they're saying anything. It may not be. There's only three people here, so. <laughs> and one of them's me. <laughs> Let's see. Where is Photoshop? Okay. Um, this first drawing I'm doing is is what Evan referred to as the cat one. And I mentioned it, um, I, I think, in a previous live stream. Basically, my friend wants a drawing of a group of cats having a funeral in a backyard, um, you know, burying one of the cat friends. And then, but behind them, <laughs> John McNeilson says, if you draw it, they will come. Um, I, I, I hope so, but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. If you guys uh, share out the video on, on the Twitter and stuff, that would be a big help. Um, you're going to, if you're going up against the Dashley Dillard, unfortunately. Yeah, I noticed that, I mean, right before I was about the live stream, I, I saw that Dillard had sent me a link to, um, to one of his live streams. And I was like, ah, there's nothing I can do about it. It's like, I need to, I need to start drawing. So um, that's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, so this, this drawing, uh, the basic um, premise is a bunch of cats are having a funeral in the backyard. And uh, behind them, the family dog or a couple of dogs are goofing around in the background, digging up the backyard, digging holes in the background in the backyard and digging up bones. And while these cats are burying their friend, <laughs> and one of the cats says to the other one, "I told you we should have gone to the pet, crem pet crematorium." So that's the punchline. Where um, so um, I thought it was funny when my friend uh, told me about it. We, we kind of worked on them together. He uh, he would come up with a with a basic premise, and then I would kind of we kind of riff off each other to sort of come up with the what we thought was the funniest sort of. Uh, story line for the, these one panel cartoons. So it made me chuckle anyway. So even if no one else thinks it's funny, we did. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna start sketching. This is going to be just a really rough sketch because I don't really know what caskets look like. I'm just, I'm going to have to go back and look at references when I do the final sketch. Oh, sorry, final illustration. Ah, uh, Evan Ross Graver says, tell me about this Rugger Hauer guy. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure you guys all heard that Rugger Hauer passed away yesterday, which was, very, which was very sad. Actually, he didn't pass away yesterday, but they buried him yesterday. He passed away last week, I think the 19th, and they just didn't tell anyone until after he was buried. So um, uh, maybe they wanted to avoid uh, a, you know, a bunch of people sort of trying to get to his uh, funeral and stuff, but... Uh, I don't know how how private a guy he was. He he was in uh, the Netherlands um, when he died. I guess he lived there. Um, but um, yeah, it's very sad. He was you know he's a, a very iconic actor. I mean I I knew him mainly from uh, um, you know Blade Runner and uh, Blind Fury, where he played a sort of a blind um, 
modern day blind samurai. He was, I think, it was a blind uh, Vietnam vet. Um, you know, he's been a lot of really cool movies, a lot of iconic roles over the years. Uh, he was in um, the remake of um, Salem's Lot from I think 2004. Um, he played the main vampire in that. Um, yeah, he was in Batman Begins. Evan. Um, he's been in tons of movies. Um, was he in The Fifth Element? Can't remember. Was he? I think he was. Um, but yeah, he, he's got a long career. Um, really, really good actor. Um, so yeah, it was a shame. A pity that he uh, he passed on, but we all do at some point. So. Um, and some people, I mean, I, I remember I recently, you know, they were talking about with uh, the the X Men and the MCU coming, you know, the X Men joining the MCU, and uh, you know, some people were were talking about him, you know, that he should play Magneto, and he'd be a good choice. Um, uh, it's, but now, yeah, you know, it's not going to happen, obviously. Um, Evan Moscow says, I don't think so. You don't think so? What he was? You don't think he was in the Fifth Element? Is that it? Um, so. Have you seen Blind Fury? Yeah, yeah. I, that's that's one of my favorite movies with him in, with him in it. Um, Blind Fury, very good movie. I mean, it's a very eighties type movie. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's a good actor. He was in another movie, um, uh, sort of like the, um, it was basically based on the most dangerous game, but it starred him and Ice-T and, uh, and he was, he was one of the guys who was trying to hunt Ice-T in that movie. Um, Troy McNeilson says, uh, Blind Fury is very underrated. Um, yeah, I liked, I liked it. I thought, you know, I thought it was a great movie. Um, Evan Bonscriver says, ooh, he was in Smallville? Is in Smallville. As what? As who? He's also on Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> oh man! And Morgan Edge. He played Morgan Edge in Smallville. I don't even remember that. Um, I pro I'm sure I haven't seen every episode of Smallville. I mean, he's probably the one I missed. I mean, I remember Carrie Fisher in Smallville, um, but I don't remember. Um, don't remember Roger Howard. Yeah. Ah, yeah, he was, Buffy, he was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie. Yeah, that's another one, another classic one. Ah, that's it. He was a president in Valerian. Okay, that, I confused the fifth element with uh, Valerian. So I knew I'd seen him in a movie like that. Yeah, Evan and, and Charlie. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I didn't like Valerian. I thought I would, 
the trailers I thought looked really good. I saw the actual movie. And I was very disappointed. Um, I, cause I usually like Luc Besson, um, films, uh, but it, it, the, the Valerian was all, all style, no substance. Characters were paper thin, um, if not thinner than paper, more like rice paper. They were very, very weak, poorly, um, sort of poorly conceived, even though it's based on a on sort of a long long standing um comic strip, the I, I found the the actors just mediocre. Um who was it? It was the guy the guy who played Green Goblin um in uh, Spider Man two with Andrew Garfield um and uh or as a kid. He I mean he looks like a kid. But he's supposed to be playing some some lady some ladies man in Valerian and he just couldn't pull it off. It's like this guy looks like he's ten. Um and then um I can't remember her name. She uh she's the um she played the the witch character in uh in uh Suicide Squad. Um she's been in a, in a few things. She's 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 mainly a a model, fashion model and she acts a little. Um but she she was she started in Valerian as well. Um but they were both poor. They had no chemistry at all. And they're supposed to be like really sort of, if not in love, there's supposed to be like a lot of like sort of sexual tension between them. And it was non-existent in Valerian. I was just like, these people act like they barely even like each other or know each other. I mean, it's, it was just, it was kind of, it's kind of painful seeing them try to act. But anyway, um, <laughs> Yeah, so Valerian didn't didn't meet my my expectations, unfortunately. Hey, Tiana DIY, how you doing? Oh, it's your first time on the stream. Hey, I'm glad you're here. What brought you here? Tiana, glad to see you. If this is your first time on the stream. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and give the video a thumbs up. Right now I am sketching, um, uh, doing a rough sketch for uh, an ad illustration um, for a friend of mine for his business. So I'm just trying to lay everything out. Um, kind of says, I'm doing good. I normally stream too, but taking a break this week. That's good. Cool. Do you and Evan know each other, Tiana? He's also, ah, uh, yeah, he's also in Sin City. It's Cardinal Roar. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. We're also talking about Rugger Hauer. Um, got to arrest the wrists and arms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I, I need to be careful about that as well. And no, I don't know, Evan. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're here. You're more than welcome. Ah, just described. Looking forward to watching more of your streams. Oh, cool. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I try to stream a, a, at least a few times a week. Um, I should probably get, put, do it on a schedule, but I'm not, I'm not that organized yet, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> uh, Evan Boscar says he was also in Wilfred. Wilfred? I don't, I'm not familiar with that. What is, what is Wilfred, Evan? Um, Tiana says digital art is cool. Yeah, it is. Um, I, tend to draw more traditionally, but I find that for um, for doing rough layouts, digital is faster because I, I, I erase a lot when I draw. Um, so it's much easier for me to erase digitally like that and then hit undo if I want to change it um, than it is for me to erase with a pencil and then having to clean it up. And, you know, I'd rather make most of my mistakes digitally and then I could just light box it once I have the general layout finished. So it makes it, uh, it just makes things cleaner for me. Tiana, uh, Tiana says in May and June, I streamed every day for three hours. Wow, no wonder your hand hurts. Ouch, man, yeah, I can't. Well, I would like, I would like to be able to do that, but I need, I need to build up to it because it's, um, I, I, I'm kind of an introvert, so I find live streaming to be um, sort of nerve wracking. At least, at least before I do it. Once I start doing it, then I'm, I'm, I'm more or less fine. But I get, I get um, stage fright, so <laughs> that keeps me from doing it like every day, even if I plan to do it. So, but I can usually make myself do it at least a few times a week. Um, Will, Will, is that the TV show? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, Elijah Wood um, TV show about a dog who talks, a guy talks to his dog. Yeah, the guy, the dog is in the, the guy in the dog suit. Once you keep doing it, you will be more natural. Yeah, it's a good way to interact with people. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been um, doing it for, uh, I've had this channel for, uh, for almost a year. I think it'll be a year in September, but, um, just have to keep, yeah, the more you do it, the better you, you get at it, the more comfortable you get. And I, but I just, uh, you yeah, know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little like pulling teeth with me. Hard to, hard for me to get into it sometimes. Well, I'm going to keep trying. I'm not going to give up. And get subscribers too. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, um, trying to become more efficient, more, trying to refine how to do uh, how how to make this uh, make this channel as effective as possible in terms of get, getting more views and subscribers and stuff. Evan Evan's been helping me. He's been giving me um, sort of suggestions and tips. So I just need to incorporate all that stuff and um, I, I just try to I guess be a better YouTuber, whatever that means. <laughs> Again, I think a lot of this is 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 practice, trial and error. So. Um, cause I, I don't know if there's any magic formula. There probably is. I mean, if you're, if you're very engaging, if you're very charismatic and stuff on, on camera, if you have stuff that, uh, is very, um, just really strikes people as, uh, as worth watching, then, uh, then you get, you get subscribers pretty quickly, but, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a little, I'm a little more awkward, so. <laughs> I guess that was a lot slower. Um, Roger Howard was also in a recent game called The Observer, a cyberpunk detective horror. Oh, wow. Uh, Tiana asks, do you have Instagram? Yes, I do have Instagram. Uh, if you go into the uh, description, sorry, the um, um, the about section of my YouTube 
channel. You can find all my um, contact information, including my Instagram. I think on Instagram, my uh, my name is, uh, let's see, I think it's at R-O-B-I-N-Z-S-O-N 13. Um, let's see, Instagram. There, I think that's it. Um, and I need to update my Instagram because I, I don't do my Instagram as nearly as often as I should. And uh, yeah, that's that as well. It's just a, it's a lot of work, um, social media, um, keeping up with it because there's so many different aspects. I mean, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, Instagram, um, DLive, if you do that sort of stuff or whatever. It's, and you need, you, need, <laughs> you, need, you need 20 arms in order to keep up with everything. So it's, just, it's, it's very, it's very time consuming. Um, oh, thank you, Deanna. Deanna said I just followed you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Are you an artist, uh, Tiana? Uh, Tiana says, yeah, I have a Discord server too. Wow. <laughs> you were, uh, are you an artist as well? Get this, says Evan. There's an Adams Family movie coming out this year. Really? Is it live action? Or is it uh, like uh, CGI animated? My subscriber made the server for me. Oh, wow. Cool. Oh, neat. Tiana says, check out my channel after. Yeah, I will. I will. Now these are these little things here in the back. I mean, this is the house, obviously. Well, not, maybe not obviously. This is the house, back of the house, um, sliding glass door. How do those look like? Like that? I'm not sure. I don't know what they look like, but okay. Sliding glass door from the background, backyard patio. I guess this would be the. Uh, what would this be? Barbecue. Barbecue. Um, windows. Um, but these things here are, are holes that the family dog has dug up looking for bones. And meanwhile, the, the cats are having their little cat funeral here. little kitty and then uh and then it, like this cat is saying to this cat i told you we should have gone to the pet crematorium so that's the uh that's the gag um tiana in case you didn't hear my um like i said i'm doing this this illustration for my friend who owns a pet crematorium and he wants a series series of illustrations for an ad campaign that he is he's running. So he wants he wants the they're going to be sort of dark humor um, illustrations and ads. So um, oh, it's going to be CGI. This Evan, the Adams Family cart, uh, movie. Great. Okay. Cool. I hope it's uh, I hope it's good because I like the Adams Family. Um, Tiana says, I like this idea of, of playing the piece digitally. Yeah, it just it just makes it easier for me. Um, like I said, it's uh, yeah. and I get to live stream it, so that's fun too. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you're a photographer. Great. Um, Tiana says, you're really good at drawing. Oh, thanks. Uh, I only started drawing two months ago. Oh, that's cool. Good. Hey, it's never too late. You know, as long as, you know. When did Grandma Moses start? She started when she was in her 70s, and she she became world famous. So, yeah, do not worry about uh, you know when you start. Just uh, you know, just have fun. One thing about drawing, well, drawing is like anything else. Like you never stop learning. Um, so, yeah, don't worry. I'm still 
definitely still learning how to draw. <laughs> Oh, is the stream done? No. What happened? Something happened? Hold on. I'm sorry, not watching the uh, the actual. No, stream's not done. I'm still here. Is it still drawing? It's still drawing. Yeah. Stream's not done. So, uh, what? I might not be talking the whole time because I'm drawing, but uh, no, I'm, I'm, we're, we're still here. Still, still drawing. It was quiet. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I um, I'm, I, I like I said, I'm, I'm kind of an introvert, so I mean, I, I don't necessarily talk the whole time. This might be a quasi silent stream. Um, but if you have any questions, I mean, I'm, I'm here. So. Yeah, it says that's okay. You don't have to talk. Okay. Um, yeah, I, again, it's, um, this is sort of a learning, live streaming is sort of a learning curve for me because I, usually I, uh, I don't talk when I'm drawing <laughs> by myself. So me sort of, uh, carrying a conversation with myself is, uh, I mean, I, I do it, but usually I usually just do it my, inside my head and, uh, <laughs> I don't have to, I don't really have to entertain anyone else while I'm drawing. Uh, so yeah, I was just asking about Spider-Man. It should fill, fill a few hours. Yeah, that's, that's only when, when I'm talking about the, the terrible new movies. Um, Kevin says, when I was live streaming every day, I was talking too much and almost lost my voice. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I found if I, if I, if I talk too much, cause I'm not used to it. Um, yeah, my, I, my throat starts to, uh, starts to tighten up, so. I admire people who have the, uh, the gift of gab when it comes, because live streaming is a lot easier for them. Try thinking aloud, Jiminy. Uh, I don't know if you want to really want to hear my thoughts. <laughs> Just a lot of us rambling. What, what I want to do, I need to figure out some way to play music um, during uh, 
during these live streams because um I mean I can usually do it with um when I'm drawing on paper when I'm live streaming through my phone because you guys can hear it. I could I I might try to I could try to do it now, but it'd be coming through my headphones and well rather it'd be coming through my speakers and I'm you you probably hear some of it in my headphones, but it wouldn't sound very good. It'd probably end up being more annoying than anything else, and the silence is probably better than sort of garbled third-hand music <laughs> that you might be hearing. Oh, oh no, let me try, let me try it. If you guys are annoyed by it, just say so, and I will stop it forthwith. Let's see, YouTube. Because it, um, my voice isn't isn't super clear right now. I mean, I know it sounds a little little robot robotic through these headphones. So let me see here. Um, oh boy, Evan Von Scarver says, I have a serious question. Who is the best Robin? I guess you're talking about Batman or Robin. That'd be, that'd be the first one, Dick Grayson. He's the best one. The OG Robin is the best. Um, let's see, Tiana says, I'm still here, but watching TV too. Oh, good. Okay, cool. What are you watching? Hopefully it's something good. I don't watch that much TV anymore. Um, I tend to watch, um, I watch some series um, on, uh, what are they called? Um, the, um, it's not pay-per-view, but it's um, the um, services like Amazon Prime, um, uh, streaming services. I'll watch some TV shows on there, but um, network TV, I don't really watch network TV anymore. Probably because it's not that good. <laughs> Um, everybody subscriber says, I know, right? Pope said Tim Drake. Yeah, well, Pope Fire is younger, so, um, I mean, it's, it's like, it's sort of like Green Lantern. It's like you, you tend to, uh, people tend to like the, the version that they grew up with. So that's probably why she thinks Tim Drake is better. But I, I think overall, I, for me, what makes the best Robin is the one who's the most, um, the most balanced, the most uh, well-adjusted, and uh, I, I think that Dick Grayson is easily the most well-adjusted of all the Robins. You know, I mean, they, they all, they're all kind of screwed up because their parents were all murdered, but, um, you know, Tim Drake has, I'm not, not Tim Drake, but Dick Grayson has the, has the best sense of humor. Um, he, you know, he's the most, he seems to be, be the one who's turned out the most normal out of all of them. Tim Drake seems to be a little too serious. He seems to be more, he's not, he's not, he's not as serious as Batman, but he, uh, he's definitely sort of a type A personality, while Dick Grayson seems to be much more of a um, fun-loving, you know, relaxed guy, able to make friends with everyone. Um, at the same time, he's, he's able to, to get down to business and, and kick butt and do what needs to be done. So, um, yeah, I think he's the, he's the best Robin overall. Uh, sorry. It looks like I'm not drawing right now. It's because I'm not, I'm getting some of the drink. So <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm just walking back to the computer. Ah, drat. I used an extra glass. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Not to wash it. Um, Evan Scriber says, uh, I think Dick Grayson is the best Robin, the best Batman, and the only Nightwing. You think Dick Grayson is the best Batman? I think Batman's the best Batman. Um, Tiana says, I like Christian Bale as Batman. I don't like Ben Affleck. Yeah, I kind of feel the same. Um, 
I, I liked the way Ben Affleck looked as Bruce Wayne. He looked like Bruce Wayne. Um, and he may, he might've been a, a good Batman, but we'll never know because he, he he's never, he's not going to be in a Batman movie. Whereas Christian Bale had a chance to be in three Batman movies. So we got a good ch- opportunity to see Christian Bale as Batman, as Bruce Wayne, um, Ben Affleck, we saw, I would say, bits and pieces of him as Batman um, because he never had a standalone Batman film. He, he, would, he would just, he was only in films where he co-starred as Batman with other characters. So, um, it's Batman, Ben Affleck's, I liked it mainly be, because of that action scene in the warehouse in, in Batman v Superman. Um, the rest of the time, he, he, he just kind of played a psycho in, in that movie. Um, I didn't really, I don't know. I, I didn't like, I didn't like the, the, the selection of Ben Affleck as Batman. I thought it was, he was a poor choice. I always wanted, um, what's his name from Mad Men to play Batman. Um, John Hamm. I thought he would, he would have been good because he, he looks like Bruce Wayne and, and he's a good actor. Um, and I hate the the choice of uh, Robert Pattinson as the new Batman. I think it's just a terrible choice. Um, you know, I, my my wife made me go see all all the um, uh, what what are those movies called? The um, Twilight movies. Um, and he was he was the he's probably the worst actor out of everyone in that in that series. Um, so for for them to to make him Batman, I think is a is a is a, is a bad decision. Um, John Hamm will make a great Jack Ryder. You want him to be the Creeper? Um, I think he's a little too big to be, play the Creeper. I always think of the Creeper as being someone who who's very well, not very, but more more lanky. John Hamm has quite a he's a big guy. Um, I don't I don't know I don't know. Hmm. Uh, excuse me. I take a drink. I'm talking too much. Um, let's see. No. Uh, all right. Um, let me see. I'm not even sure if this is going to work. All right, that doesn't work. Let me see here. Output. Um, hmm. All right. Let me see settings. All right. Microphone. Sound. Headphones. That work? Do you guys still hear me? If you guys can still hear me, um, just type in yes in the uh, in the chat. I just want to make sure. Save. Okay, I I think. Evan, can you still hear me? Okay, no, you can't hear me. Okay, um, <laughs> I assume you can. Um, what about Keanu Reeves as as Victor Freeze? He, he, you know what, he would be good as as as, as Mr. Freeze because he has that sort of um, laconic voice, and Mr. Freeze. I mean, I'm I'm just going by the the animated series, Batman the animated series. He has a very monotone voice, and so does Keanu Reeves. I think he, he would be good as Mister Freeze, and he, and he has a very melancholy look to him. Um, I mean, obviously from John Wick, you know, he he pulls out this sort of sad puppy dog look, um, really well. So, yeah, I think he'd be good as as that character. Um, let's see now, 
Got that, got that. Let's see if this works. That doesn't, hmm. All right, let's try this. And it's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm trying to figure this out with my. <laughs> Evan says, uh, make it happen to me. Uh, hashtag Keanu Frock, freeze. Um, yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any power when it comes to, uh, actual, um, Keanu says, I love how the dog is digging a hole in the background. Yeah, that, hopefully that will, uh, it'll look better, you know, once the final artwork is, is done. I just need to, I need to fiddle with it a little. Um, but yeah, Evan, I don't have any control when it comes to casting in Hollywood, unfortunately. Otherwise, there would, there would be some major changes in terms of some of the casting in Hollywood right now if I were in charge. <laughs> one day, one day I'll, I'll control all casting in Hollywood and, and then uh, we'll have, actually have some really good uh, comic book movies coming out, finally. And first, first thing on my list of casting decisions would be to hire Billy Zane as Lex Luthor instead of this this nonsense with uh yeah use my YouTube cloud my 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 army of of three hundred and and twenty some odd subscribers um actually it's three hundred and thirty six I think now with uh, Tiana so Tiana will, will put us over the top in terms of controlling Hollywood and bending it to our will finally <laughs> excellent um. Yeah, so uh, everybody, get, um, Jimmy should be a casting director. Yeah, that'd be great. I can't do any worse than Hollywood's already doing. So that, 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 that's, the, uh, that's the upside of it. Can't do any worse. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, well, that works, but I don't know if you guys can hear the music or if this comes through as uh, annoying. If it's annoying, let me know, and I will turn it off. Anyway, let me get back to drawing. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this cat over. Take out the little baby cat. That's a little too macabre. And then put a little cat priest here. The little cat Bible. Evan can, you, Evan, can you guys still hear me? Okay, cool. Thanks.
<laughs> yeah, so this is turning out great. <laughs> okay, cool. I don't know if that little cat was, was too macabre as I could think of a worse situation. Yeah, there are always worse situations. But I just want it, I want the, um, I want it to be dark, but not, not overly dark. I mean, I don't, you know, it's, whenever, whenever you're dealing with, uh, and it's not a, it's not a kid, it's a, it's a cartoon kitten, but I don't know. I, I, the, I guess the idea of, of a, a dog, of a dog digging up bones and uh, with a little kitten there, with a little, I don't know, maybe a little too much. And again, this is for my friend's business. So I don't want, I don't want to draw anything that might turn off potential customers of his any more than <laughs> this drawing will <laughs> anyway. Um, because, uh, you know, the, again, you're dealing with the subject of people losing their pets. So you have to kind of, it to be somewhat sensitive. Um, I'm just trying to think ahead. Uh, Evan Pascar says, "Good call." Uh, well, I just actually, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that you know, it's better that I sort of take it out now than my friend asked me to take it out later. So. Uh, what's going on here? I'm getting little messages from Facebook that are annoying me. Um, Um, Evan says you're not doing fan editions tonight. Um, no, I'm not. Um, uh, for anyone who is watching and not familiar with what fan edition, what Evan's talking about, um, he's talking about the uh, drawn and quartered fan edition. Drawn and quartered is a weekly competition, um, a drawing competition for anyone who wants to enter. Um, they have a pro edition and they have a fan edition. Um, the pro edition is for uh, professional art, uh, comic book artists, and the fan edition is for fans of comic books who like who like to draw. Uh, yesterday, Wednesday was was a pro edition. Today, Thursday is a fan edition, um, and I, I usually compete in the fan edition uh, because it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, and then the winner of the fan edition gets to be on the pro edition the following week. Um, but yeah, Evan, I, I've been having trouble getting um, getting onto Hangouts with the fan edition um the past probably past two months it's been it's been really difficult and last week i, I couldn't get on at all um uh, chester busby who runs the uh who runs the uh the, the channel that fan edition is on every thursday um yeah he would send me the link and every time i would try to 
use it, it would not work for me. Um, last week, he sent it to me uh, via Twitter, sent it to me, sent it to my email. The email never showed up. I tried to send it to me directly. It, it, it didn't work. So um, uh, I didn't do it tonight because next Wednesday, I plan on being at, being somewhere else. Um, so I didn't want to risk, <laughs> not, not, not to sound like a, not to sound arrogant. I didn't want to risk winning if I, if I played tonight, if I was even able to get on. That was, that, that, the main thing was I wasn't, I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to get, be able to get on. But if I was able to get on, I didn't want to possibly win and then not be able to go to the pro edition next week. So I figured I'm just, I'm not even going to do it at all because I'm, I already have plans for next Wednesday. So I wouldn't be able to be on the pro edition even if I did win. So, um, yeah. So, but everyone, if you, if you, if you have time, go and watch the fan edition. If you like art, if you enjoy, uh, drawing competitions, which are a lot of fun to watch, um, it's a two hour live drawing competition between, um, between various artists and, um, they all draw the same subject. They get a, a different, different subject each week. Um, Evan, do you know what they're drawing tonight? I don't. I'm not even sure what they're drawing. Oh, I, I think I do know. I think they're drawing that new um, independent comic book character, Mary Sue. Um, so um, it's going to be held tonight in about an hour. Actually, it's going to be held at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, yeah. Uh, well. Not Marie Sue, but it's, it's Mary Sue, like that, Mary Sue. And um, it's going to be held on Chester Busby's channel. Um, Chester Busby. Um, hold on. YouTube channel. Chester Busby. And it's a uh, drawn and quartered fan edition. If you have a chance, go check it out. It's going to be, again, in about an hour, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, you guys will like it. It's, it's usually between, eh, I think it's usually about eight hours to compete. Um, hey, Tiana says, I'll check it out. You should. Yeah, I think you'll like it. And um, it's two hours long. And what else do you need to know? Um, it's black and white. There's no color. There's no color in the, in the drawing. So. That's racist. Oh, who's that? Is that uh? Hold on. Yeah, it is Nasser. Nasser showed up. <laughs> I've been oh, here for like two minutes. I was waiting to see if you noticed. <laughs> sorry, I wasn't looking at the main uh the main uh hangouts window. I was looking at something else. So I figured I was gonna try. <laughs> I was just I was just gonna lurk for for a minute and see how long it took you to notice. Okay, well, you, you would have been looking a long time because <laughs> I probably wouldn't have noticed unless you had spoken up. Hold on one second. Let me turn this off. There you go. How you doing, Nasser? Tired. <laughs> You're tired? Oh, you yeah. uh, had a long day of uh, ca- counting other people's money? Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, has to the bank. He, he, he also works as a, as a, as a writer. Um, for those of you who, who don't know who Nasser Rabadi is, um, Nasser has written some comic books, um, some good ones, actually. Um, he has one coming up called, uh, Trixie Kane. He, he previously wrote one called Stardust, and now he is, uh, focusing purely on novels, um, and, uh, horror novels, actually. Uh, Nasser is a, is a big horror fan, horror, and, uh, he enjoys, uh, writing things that he thinks scares people, but more, not, more often than not, it just makes people laugh. So, uh, <laughs> Kind of. Uh, oh man, were you doing good, Nasser? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should be writing, but I was like, uh, I'll stop by, and say hi to Jason. Okay, good. I'm glad you did. Yeah, it's good talking to you. Um, glad you're doing okay. Uh, Evan in the chat says, Nasser, I'm writing for Dillard. Oh, yeah, me and Dillard were gonna work together. <laughs> then, oh, I, really? then, then I quit. Then I quit comics. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Oh, that's awesome, Evan. Oh, good. Oh, very cool. I didn't even know Ev- that Evan wrote. That's great. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tiana DIY is, is leaving now that I showed up. All right. 
uh, I guess I, I have a habit of killing your streams. Okay, Tiana, thank you very much for showing up. It's a pleasure meeting you, and I hope we see you again soon. Thanks for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And and again, try to uh, try to check out Drawn and Quarter in about an hour. <laughs> Evan says I don't write. <laughs> <laughs> So he's, he's, he's pulling a fast one on John Dillard. He's, he's, he told Dillard that he writes, but he doesn't really write. <laughs> oh, oh, is Dillard looking for my replacement already? I'm sorry? I said, is Dillard looking for my replacement already? Oh, okay. Nah, well, <laughs> good luck, Dillard. No, it's fine. I never even turned him in the script. We, like, agreed, like, uh, that, that we just never talked about it. Uh, he was like, he, I told him a, a vague idea. He's like, yeah, that sounds cool. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll turn in a script. And then, you know, like a week uh -huh. later, I was gone. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dang. You, you, you pulled a fast one on John Dillard. That's I great. pulled a fast one on everybody. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like you. <laughs> yeah. Not to do. Hold on. Um, I got to put you back in my ear. Do you say something? Uh, No. I don't know. I think I just said yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I had to switch uh, before the um, the the sound was coming from my speakers, and now it's coming from my headphones, so I can actually hear you. Oh, Evan says that he quit comics too. You quit buying them, or what? I don't, I don't know what you mean, Evan. He just says he quit. Evan, don't quit comics. Comics are awesome. I love comics. Yeah, me too. I just hate the people. Yeah, <laughs> well. Yeah, I like some of the people. I like most of the people. I, I don't, you know, it, it, it was, it's different for you because you were actually in the midst of making them. I mean, I think for fans, it's, um, well, you, I mean, you're a fan too, but I mean, for people who are, who are just readers and consumers of comics rather than people who actually are in the, are in the trenches making them, it's, um, it's a lot, it's a lot cleaner. Um, I mean, I, I think whenever you're actually actively involved in something, it doesn't matter what it is. It, it could be comics. It could be making sausages, you know, <laughs> like working in, it, it, try working in the church. Okay. That, that will turn you off the church big time. Um, you know, I, I worked at my church for, you know, not too long for maybe, hmm, maybe six months or so. This is years ago, but you know, when you go to church, it, it, church is a is a is a very peaceful place, it's a place of refuge. You know, a place of, you know, of getting closer to God. Um, but when I worked at church, I, I I realized like, you know, people work at church are just like everyone else. You know, they're not they're not. Yeah, you sort of have this idea. It's like, oh, everyone's so peaceful at church. You know, they're so nice to each other. It's like, no, they're not always really nice to each other at church. They're they're human. You know. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, I think it's sort of the same with, same, same way with comics. It's like, I think we sort of have this idea in comics, like, oh, everyone sort of gets along. It's like, oh, we're all have, you know, we're all in, in comics gate. We all have, have the same sort of, you know, desire to sort of do this stuff. But it's like, yeah, but we're still individuals with, you know, personalities that will conflict a lot of times. And we'll, we're still kind of, you know, like human, and, you know, we're all flawed. So a lot, a lot of that stuff gets, Sort of amplified when you're sort of in the midst of uh, working together. So yeah. Although although when I when I make my eventual comeback, you, you know we'll work on something. Okay. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Then you can hate me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you draw a lot of blood and guts. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind. As long as the right people. As long as the right. It's the right people's blood and guts. Yeah. You know, like villains, <laughs> bad guys. Um. Yeah, I can't, I can't. Yeah, I've never. Hmm. Yeah, and and I'll probably do a lot of it like in shadow, like off camera. I'll be I'll, I'll be really, I'll be really really crafty about how I how I show blood and guts in my in my comics. <laughs> so, that works. It won't, it won't be like Hannibal Lecter. Um. But uh, yeah. So so we have a confirmation tonight live that Nostra will return to comics. <laughs> The scoop. You heard it here first, folks. Not just coming back to comics. It's just a question of when. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Give give it a year or so. I'll 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 make you know another one or two. I think. Hey man, that's awesome. Glad <laughs> to hear it. Well, well most, mostly because uh, well, I want to finish the rest of uh, the Trixie story. So it was it 
it was going to be three issues. I think I'm just going to keep it at two. So sometime next year, I think, you know, me and Sean will do book two. Okay, good. Glad to hear. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Evan says, yeah, I'm done backing them. You're done backing uh, comics? Hmm. Um, well, I, I would encourage you to do what you think is best, but also just because you're turned off by the behavior of maybe some creators or, or maybe comics gate in general, I would encourage you to still support comics that you like. Don't, don't abandon all comics because a few comics or a few comics creators have ticked you off or sort of turned you off of comics because that, I, I, I still support a lot of comics. Um, I don't support comics of creators who have annoyed me or ticked me off or whatever. Um, but that doesn't, that the, the medium itself, I still love. Um, I, I don't, I don't let that sour me on the medium. So, you know, but it's your money. You do with it what you will and uh, put it to where you think it will do the most good for you. So I encourage everyone to, uh, I, I, just don't, I just don't like people sort of walking away from a hobby they love because of factors, uh, um, personality factors of, of, of people who, who might be in comics. I, I, don't, I, don't, want, I don't want those people to, to ruin the hobby for, for, every, for, for, for everyone. Um, announcer, Evan has a question for you about Rugger Howard. I saw yeah. Um, uh, what do you know about Rugger Howard? Okay. Nasser is someone who 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 who, ha who who has a great love of horror and a great love of, of of many things. But when you ask him specifics, he'll say, "Uh, I don't really know that," or "Or I, I heard the name," or so. Tell me. I don't me you know keep about up Rugger with Howard. actors that much. I'm going to be honest. Oh my gosh, Nasser! <laughs> tell us what you know about Rugger Howard. <laughs> Pretty much nothing. Oh my gosh, Nasser. Nasser. Okay. Have you have you have you have you have you read Salem's Lot? Uh mm, well Stop it, Nasser. I've read part of it. Stop it. Nasser. Oh my goodness. I okay. didn't read the whole thing. I, re I only read part of it. And you love horror, you said. You're a mm -hmm. horror movie fan. Yeah. But you've never have you seen Salem's Lot, the movie? The miniseries? I own it. I've seen part of it. I just, oh. I just can't click with it. I just, I just, I just don't like it. Oh, Nasser. Nasser. Okay. Rugger Hauer starred in the remake of Salem's Lot. It was from 2004. And he played, he played the main vampire in that. Oh, okay. I have the one from, uh, think, from 19, think, 1978, I believe. Yeah, 78, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was 78. Yeah. So and that and that's that's actually a really good version. I mean, um, but it's not it is it's not a great adaptation of the original novel. The 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 remake starring Rugger Howard is, is much closer to the original source material. So but 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 the nineteen seventy eight version that you have is extremely iconic just because of the, of the of the design of the main vampire in that one, they they made they made they made him look like Nosferatu from the nineteen twenties uh, silent film. Yeah, so, yeah. No, so I, looked... I, th I think Evan just asked this to embarrass me. I'm pretty sure he knew, he knew what my answer would be. <laughs> well, yeah, I think everyone did. That you you don't know much about horror. Uh... <laughs> no, I just don't know much about actors. <laughs> um, okay, you don't. Have you ever seen Blade Runner? No. Oh gosh, Nasser. Um, <laughs> you, you, did you see Valerian? Did I see what? Valerian. No. Okay, it came out. Uh, I think last summer in movie theaters. And Rugger Howard was was in that. Um, have you ever seen um, Blind Fury? Nope. Oh gosh. Okay, so you haven't seen any Rugger Howard movies. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> He, he's a, he's a, seriously. If you have, you need to you need to watch some of his movies. He's a great actor. He's a really good actor. Watch Blade Runner, fantastic film, and he stars in it. When do you have a chance? Yeah, people keep recommending that movie. I just haven't gotten yeah. around to it. You may want you may want to listen to them uh, one one time. Next wanna... next movie on my list to watch is the uh, the sequel to Planet of the Apes. 
first sequel? Yeah, the first sequel. I think it's called uh, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. That, that's uh, yeah. Let's skip that one. The really? only ones you should. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dumb. Um, the, the only ones you should watch are, are the original. Is the original Planet of the Apes? And, yeah, it's in that. And hold on one second. I I, I don't remember the name of it. Um, where is it? Um, the re, is it Return to the Planet of the Apes? It's the one where Cornelius and well, I haven't seen them yet. I've only seen the first you the, one. Well, you saw the first one though, right? Yeah. So you know who Cornelius is, correct? Yeah, but I'm just I'm just yeah. telling you, like that's I'm, fine. I'm, that's fine. I, I, I'm just I was, I was just explaining based on you, you telling me that you saw the first one, so you know who the, yeah. who the characters are. Yeah, so Cornelius and his and his wife. The, what's her name? Zola or is that Zira or I can't Z- remember. I think it was Zira. Yeah, Cornelius and Zira get in the spaceship and they end up back in the present. They end up back in time and, uh, uh, and they land on Earth in the 20th century. Okay? And mm-hmm. it deals with their adventures here and on, on, on Earth. That one and the original Planet of the Apes are the two ones that you should watch. Well, I have the box set. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, heck. How many are in there? 50? Uh, five. <laughs> oh, dang. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll watch that one. Um, it's a really good movie. Planet You're the Earth. only one that's told me that that the rest aren't that good. Everyone else tells me they love them all. Well, I, they're 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 fine, but it's it's it's. I'm just, I'm just telling you the good ones. I mean, I mean, I, I love Godzilla movies, but Godzilla movies are dumb. <laughs> I mean, I, I I I can love a movie, but it but still recognize that it, it's not a great movie. Um, the the other Planet of the Apes movies they're not they're not great movies, but they're they're classics just because you know it's Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see which one is it? No, it's it's Escape from the Planet of the Apes, I believe. Um, is this it? Let me just make sure. Well, I think that's what Trusty Sidekick said in the chat. Yes. Right, yeah, this is it. Yeah, escape. It's, it's Escape from the Planet of the Apes. It's, it's the third movie. Hmm. So, have you have you seen any of the new ones? Like the, well, I think it's like a, a reboot or something. Uh, yeah, I have I have those ones too. Are those ones good? I didn't like them because the people. I, I saw the first one, and it annoyed the heck out of me because. It was the one with uh, what's his face? Um, what I can't remember his name. The um, the guy who played the Green Goblin's son in, in Spider Man. What was oh. his name? Um. Anyway, regardless, um, it, it starred him, and he he has he has this chimp that he's experimenting on. Chimp ends up super smart. He takes the chimp home from the lab, even though this chimp is like super smart. The chimp attacks his neighbor bites off his neighbor's fingers and stuff and i'm like thinking and, and then he takes his chimp back to lab so that he can continue experimenting on it so the chimp can continue getting smarter and smarter and i'm thinking the whole time it's like shoot that chimp in the head <laughs> uh, I, 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 I mean, it's just like the people in, in in the movie are so are so dumb i mean w- while i'm watching it it's like this chimp is, is smarter than humans and you're just, and it, it's already attacked one human and, and partially maimed him. And you're just gonna just take it back to the lab like nothing's happened. It's like it's it, 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 so. So of course, when when this chimp turns on the human and makes every other monkey in the lab super smart like him, and you know they end up attacking the humans. It's like, well, what do you think would happen, idiot? <laughs> so it, um, I. That movie turned me off of the um, of the I guess the reboot, but I but I have all the sequels because I wanted to give I wanted to give the sequels a chance. I just never watched them because I still had the I still had the sour taste in my mouth on the first one. But I, I suspect that the that the other movies, from what I've seen, the the snippets I've seen of them, they look good. So I, I would encourage you to watch watch them, despite my dislike of the first one. 
Yeah, I have those ones too. I just never watched them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, but having seen the original series, watch the first one, which you've already seen, and and we we'll watch all of them. But the, I'm telling you, the good ones are the first one and the, and the third one. The other ones are, are skippable. <laughs> <laughs> well, we shall see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll see if you actually watch it. So I, I, I don't know. So no, far, I think I, I think I'm gonna watch it tomorrow or or after. Okay, cool. Let me know what you think. <sighs> we'll do. How's your new novel coming? Oh, it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much, how much? Uh, are they at the at the island yet or what? No, we we still have uh some more uh mishaps they got to go through before that. <laughs> gotcha. I ah. set up. I set up a lot more uh, character development. Uh, I finished chapter. Th- uh, no, did I? Yeah, yeah. I finished chapter three. Now I'm on chapter four. Uh, okay. They, you know, I'm I'm adding a little bit more uh, character development. Um, yeah. Slowing down the pace a little bit because you were right. It did move super fast. Uh, yeah. So slowing it down a bit. Uh, mm-hmm. I, they're probably not going to get there. I think until probably chapter six. I don't know. I don't plan these things out, but. Right. I, but I have a but I have a vague idea of what I think should happen next. Uh-huh. Uh, cool. I never force it to do anything though. I just let it flow. Good. So we'll see if it actually ends up happening or if things change. But I have uh-huh. a creepy idea of what should happen next, okay. and then uh, soon uh, there will be the island. Okay. Good. Cool. Yeah. Look forward to seeing what seeing what happens with it. Yeah, and I uh, finally have my uh, files uploaded for the hard copy of my book, Eternity. I'm just waiting on Amazon to approve them. Now, normally, every time I submit files to Amazon, they pr- mm-hmm. they they approve it within, like, a couple hours. Even though it says it takes up to 72, like, it could be anywhere, like, it could be anywhere up to 72 hours. Usually, it takes them, like, an hour or two. Now wow. I'm I'm just waiting. It's still in review though. I'm like, come on, this can be the one time they don't approve it within hours. <laughs> oh wow. Hmm. Weird. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but it'll be up to seventy-two hours or so. It could be could be less. Yeah. And then uh, then the paperback of Eternity will be up, and that's cool because uh, I ran a poll the other day on my Twitter. Like, so how many of you are waiting for the? hard copy and how many already bought it and and how many uh i think uh what what were the options right. i think one i think one was like because i ran a poll and i said uh did you buy it yet and i think one option was no one was yes i got the ebook and another was no i'm waiting for the hard copy and i think i had like 15 votes for waiting for hard copy so uh okay. so i'm hoping the hard copy sells well once it's up yeah, yeah. but i have not had to i've not had a sale today but I've had uh-huh. sales for uh, six days in a row. Yeah, I, it's. I mean, I think some people just don't like ebooks. Um, they, yeah. they, they they love the feel. They love the, the experience of, of reading an, an, an actual book. I mean, that's a, that's how I am. I, I don't. I think yours is the first ebook I've I've bought. Um, just because you nagged me about it, um, <laughs> yeah. but but because because I, I I love I love physical books I love reading books that are that I can hold my hand I can smell the paper I can um Evan yeah, says why is there, Evan says why is everyone obsessed with hard copies because it it's it, it, well, it, 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 it's it's an experience to 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 hold a physical book and well for those pages. reasons. For yeah. those reasons too, but also I forget I own it if I have it digital. Like I remember when uh, right, yeah, when, when Mike S. Miller first came on the scene and he was and on one of Ethan's streams and he was like, "Yeah, guys, sub to my YouTube." I was like, "Oh, this guy's cool." You know, I'll, I'll sub to him. So sub uh-huh. to Mike. And on one of the, I think it was the first stream I watched uh, mm-hmm. of Mike, and it was yeah. only a few. It was a few days before Stardust launched. <laughs> and I remember he's uh-huh. like. He's like he was trying to get monetized. This is a rabbit trail. This part, but he was like, so if I just leave this stream up for this many hours and I have twenty people in here, then all twenty of you could just keep it up, and then I'll be monetized by this date. And, and I was <laughs> kind of laughing because I knew back then Mike was a little greedy, you know, uh, a, little, but a little what? A little greedy. Oh, okay. <laughs> like yeah, money yeah. obsessed, rather, but <laughs> money obsessed kids. is probably a better way to put it. But you anyways, got twenty kids, you need to be. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, uh. Oh crap! Where's I go? Oh yeah, 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 digital. So uh, yeah. he was telling us about some of his comics, and yeah. uh, 
he was on. Um, so he was telling us about uh, the Imaginaries. Yeah, I never, yeah. I never heard of it. But I was like, oh, this is so cool. He's like, uh, yeah, you, you know, you could probably get them on eBay or something. And I was like, ah, oh, that's lame, because you know, this guy's not going to get the money if I get it on eBay, because uh, he didn't have any. And then he's like, or you could uh, download them on comiXology they're like 99 cents i was like oh sweet so you'll get a royalty then he's like i guess <laughs> i was like oh sweet so so i went to comiXology uh i downloaded i think it was like four issues or something uh-huh. i read the first one yeah and then it took me like a whole year to read the second one when i was bored one day in the uh waiting room at the dentist and yeah, i was cool. like i was like i was like there must be something to do on my phone and i was scrolling through my apps i was like Comicsology. Yeah. Like, don't I have something on here to read? And then I was like, "Oh, hey, it's <laughs> it's it's Mike's book that I read the first one. Maybe it was the first two I read." And I was like, "Oh yeah, here's the, finally the next issue. Like, I just forget I have it. But yeah. if it's if it's here in my, you know, uh, I, I have like just piles like long boxes and stuff of stuff I haven't read yet, and right. I have you know a whole bookshelf of stuff I haven't read yet. So I I, I already know it's there." <laughs> Uh-huh. You know, I'm not going to forget about it. But if it's if it's on the app, I'm I'm I I, I just I'm I'm never going to read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand with me. I mean, I, I I actually bought the hard copies of uh of Imaginaries. So probably probably the ones that you turned down, you you you, you turned your nose up. I bought them. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think I think he's awesome. ta- I think he's talked about um redoing them with new art or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think he wants to get an um. Not the same artist, or a different artist. He, yeah, he wants to he wants to reboot it. So, um, which is fine. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was an interesting story. I, I like that series. So yeah, I liked um, it. I think I just read the the three issues of it. I think there might have been like four, but when I was reading three, I kind of forgot everything from the first two. Yeah, because <laughs> it had just so long had passed. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I don't know. I've read a couple comics digitally. Well, probably actually more than a couple. I've read a few digitally, but I just mm-hmm. I just don't like it because after I read, I like it. I'm just like, I right. want the physical copy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's 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 definitely. I, I think especially with comics for me, uh, it 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 is is a whole experience with reading it. It's not it's not just reading the story and seeing the art. It's like having the book in my hand, smelling the newsprint. Um, especially with with older comics like Silver Age and Bronze Age comics, right? If, love, if it's if it's not them. on newsprint, it's not worth buying. <laughs> Nine <laughs> times out of ten, yeah. if we're being yeah. if we're being honest here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Evan has some uh, comments and statements, and Trusty Sidekick is here. Hopefully, she's still here. He hasn't run off because we we were ignoring him. Um, uh, they both mentioned as James Franco that I was forgetting whose name it was in Planet of the Apes, the, the new the new version of it. The guy with the the dumb guy who didn't shoot his chimp like he should have. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, Evan's mentioning um, Chekhov's gun. Are you familiar with that? Um, um, no. I've heard of it, but it's uh, um, Evan. Can you can you describe what Chekhov's gun is? Trusty Sekis says he's here. He's inking Skunk Girl. Oh, cool. Very good. Awesome. Oh man, I love Trusty's art. I meant to buy a piece from him one time, and it just completely yeah. slipped me because I was like, I was like, because uh, I wanted to get it for my for one of my sister's birthdays, and it was like, like I think a month or, or more in advance when I was like, hey, I might I might get this one, dude, but but like sometime next month, and then like mm-hmm. her birthday was like like two weeks after her birthday, I was like, oh crap, I never got that piece from Trusty's sidekick. Mm-mm-mm. Man, no, nah, sir. It's not like I I told him to draw it yet. I was I was just yeah. pointing out like which style I wanted because he he kept posting this real cool like, mm-hmm. um, like this portrait kind of style. I was like, oh dude, that's so cool. How much is that? And he told me, I was like, I'm gonna get one of these next month or I think or, or next couple months, something like that. <laughs> like her birthday passed. I was like, well, oh well. <laughs> You're an artiste, Nasser. You're an artiste. <laughs> I'll get something from Trusty eventually. Okay. Uh, don't say that. And not do it. Trusty's I'm listening. gonna eventually. I said eventually. I never uh-huh. put a date so on it. What? Trusty's gonna be like 95 years old, waiting by the phone. He's like, any second now, Nasser's gonna call. He promised me. Isn't he already 95? What? Isn't he already 95? No. Trusty Sack is young. He's like, uh, what are you like, like 
10, trusty. You're you're a kid. Yeah. No, let, let's take guesses. I'm I'm guessing he's 34. Hey, lady, lady Celtic Moon, how you doing? Good seeing <laughs> you. Well, yeah, he has children, so. Oh, okay. So he's yeah. like 48. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Remember, I thought you were in your 30s, and then you're like, dude, I'm almost 50. I was like, huh? I'm not 50. Yeah, almost. <laughs> well, everyone's almost 50. When 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 she when she hit 25, you're almost 50. <laughs> <laughs> You're halfway to fifty. <laughs> um, okay, he he says. Um, okay, Trusty says he's uh, fifty four. <laughs> oh, you're fifty four, Trusty. Oh, wow. I really didn't see that coming. Yeah, I didn't know he was that old. Um, no, no offense. Um, <laughs> no, he sounded young. I was. I thought he was he terrible. 30, so. Um, Evan Evan Von Scarver is describing what um. Tickoff's the uh, Tickoff's gun is. He says it's a writing principle that states not to include any extraneous elements in the story and to include everything that the audience needs to know. Um, the example being, if you show a gun in Act Two, it better be used by Act Three. Okay, when, so don't have any like throwaway scenes. Right. Yeah. Like scenes that don't add up to anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. I agree, but I, I sometimes. Um, well, I think that mostly just. Uh, happens during first drafts mm. uh when when you were what well okay because personally i when i do my second draft i never edit in the document uh because then when you read stuff you know and you're like oh it's it's so it's it's fine enough you're not gonna mm. edit it if it's already fine enough so i open up a totally separate document and then i'll read it i'll read what i have written in the first draft and i'll Start retyping it, and when I get to like those bad parts, you know, I'll you know, I'll do something different, like uh -huh. a better way to word something. And yeah. so I find that usually, uh, when I find like a a scene where I'm like, oh, this doesn't make sense because I'm I'm not gonna need it, or uh, this doesn't make sense because this character did something in this other section of the story. That's mm -hmm. usually when I end up taking it out. But okay, so usually I catch those in you know second draft. So. Yeah, I'm with you on, you know, don't have uh, throwaway scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So but, keep that mind. But, but, well, but, like, the way he says it with an example is saying if you show a gun in Act 2, it better be used by Act 3. I mean, I, I don't think you necessarily need to use it. Like, right, but you, it, 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 should, it should come But it needs play. to serve its maybe, purpose. Yeah, may, yeah, maybe it means it should come into play in some, in some way. So. Exactly. Where you go? Oh, hold on one sec. My my wife just came in. Um, please hold. Hmm. Trusty sidekick says, "Can't you hear my yeah, bones creaking when I draw?" <laughs> oh no, Trusty, we can't hear that. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was reading Trusty's message. Trusty said, "Can't you hear my bones cracking when I draw?" Oh. Uh, <laughs> Trusty, you know, we can, we can't hear that. <laughs> to me, Trusty's oh. about thirty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think Trusty Sackick is really Gary Shipman. <laughs> yeah. Trusty Sackick is a secret identity. Um, <laughs> uh, Evan says, uh, welcome to hashtag team checkoff. <laughs> cool. Oh, hmm. Alrighty then. I don't really know anybody that would be against this Chekhov thing and I'm well, pretty sure most people want their stories to serve a purpose. <laughs> well, I don't know. I wouldn't say that because I, I've, I've read plenty of stories and I've seen plenty of movies that completely ignore um, Chekhov's gun rule. So, you know, they introduce stuff and they it never gets resolved and uh, it's like, whatever happened to that thing you introduced uh, at the beginning of the movie? Well, why was it even in there? You, know, you, you didn't even do anything with it. So, a lot of bad writing out there. A lot of things that, that writers should remember that they don't. Uh, oh man, tell me about it. I I just finished watching uh, um, what's it called? Uh, Cult of Chucky. So I just uh -huh. rewatched the uh the seven Chucky movies. There are so many inconsistencies and plot holes and like it, it's like every other episode they always change up how how the voodoo thing works. Uh -huh. like, like every episode, you always find some new way. To get into someone's body, you know, find 
They, they just change up the oh, rules like that nothing oh, matters. Mm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, my wife was talking. Oh, uh, well, I, I was just saying like 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 they change up the whole voodoo thing. Like they change up all the rules. Like nothing matters. Uh, but it's it just it just causes so many plot holes. Because in the second movie, yeah, he gets angry because too much time has passed, and so now the the doll's body has become permanent. But then. Oh. <laughs> but but then but then in in the uh in the third one right uh when he gets a, a new body he's yeah. like oh the rules have reset so now I could go into someone else's body I haven't been in it too long then yeah. then in the fourth movie he's mm -hmm. like oh no but if I have this amulet I could still go yeah. into someone else's body and I'm just like yeah. so then why did you get mad in the second movie that you were in it too long if you because they they totally retconned it in in the fourth one. He's right. like, I was wearing this amulet when I died, so we have to get to my grave and and, and get it. <laughs> I was like, but if you knew that, then why were you mad in the second one when you couldn't switch bodies with Andy? It yeah. just it just made no sense. And, and then by by cult of Chucky, he's able to put himself <laughs> into multiple Chucky dolls, and oh, it just boy. gets so outrageous. There's like three you know Chucky dolls running around killing people. Awesome. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> It's it's I mean, it's entertaining, but it's just funny all the plot holes. And there's right. there's so many even more like like minor mm -hmm. plot holes like in um in uh in Curse of Chucky. The, hey, Felix one, one guy, huh? Felix Hosh just showed up. How you doing? Oh. Uh, hey Felix. You're you're you're, you're continuing your, your Chucky rant. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, sorry, I didn't know if you were gonna like read the chat or say something. But uh, but in um, in in Curse of Chucky, it, it gets like even there's this is the one that has like the biggest plot holes for me outside okay. of the voodoo stuff because yeah. I really love the movie and and right. you know, and I like the ending, but uh -huh. it, it the ending shouldn't have been the way it was because what what happens is uh, if if people don't want to be spoiled for Curse of Chucky, I mean, I guess get out now, but it's. It was straight what? to DVD like six years ago. <laughs> yeah, don't worry so, about it. That's so you thought. They had their chance. Right. They had so, their at chance. The, so at the at the end of that one, um, the the main chick, her name's uh, Nika. She gets arrested for Chucky's crimes, yeah. and and so, but earlier in the movie, one dude for other reasons had placed uh, a little camera on Chucky, and it was streaming to like his computer. Like he had all this footage like on his computer. Because he mm -hmm. thought his uh, wife was cheating, so he's like, "I'll oh, had this little camera on the toy, blah blah." So, mm -hmm. so it, it they have like a five second little like court scene and little montage at the end of the movie showing her getting arrested and convicted for the murders. I'm just like, but she, but she ends up finding out during the movie about the little camera. So I'm like, why doesn't she just tell them about the little camera? Like, like I, I, he never destroyed the computer. Like I'm sure they could just grab the computer. It was in the house. Did 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 they just find the computer of this dead man you know mm. next to him on the bed and they, they just didn't want to search it and then plus plus if chucky could bleed and he has organs why didn't she just have the the, the court just open up the doll and then they would see it was alive <laughs> <laughs> oh man you, 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 I think you're taking a lot of the fun out of the chucky movies by, by yeah I am but it. that's <laughs> that stuff bothers me yeah, no, I understand. I understand. I mean, but I mean, I yeah, I, I think uh, I think I, I, it's a good. I think that's a good reason why I don't. I don't. Um, I'm glad that I, that I don't really. I'm not that big of a fan of horror movies because I probably take it seriously, like that as well. For me, for me, movies like like Chucky and uh, what's the other other ones like. Um, Freddy Krueger. I mean, once once they get beyond like the second episode, they 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 become almost like comedies. Yeah. That's so true. it's not like I I I don't I don't look for them to be logical. I just look for them to be entertaining. And, and so if if they completely contradict everything that they sort of set up, you know, whatever rules they had in, in the previous movies, they start playing fast and loose with them. I'm like. Okay, cool, whatever. Dude, I just don't get it. Because sometimes it's like, okay, they chop his head off, he dies. But then other times, right. like, they chop his head off, he just puts it back on. Right, yeah. I'm like, yep. dude, it's, dude, stuff like this pisses me off. It's, uh, 
Okay, see the Chucky. See the Chucky is like the worst one, but this part uh, really bothered me. So they yeah. were um, so they they were in uh, Hollywood, and so Chucky's trying to get uh, they're they're trying to get Tiffany to go from the doll into this uh, into a famous actress into Jennifer right. Tilly. So it's like her character, but she's also playing herself. So uh, that was kind of weird. But anyways, but so outside of that, so they were at her her giant like mansion, you know, her giant house. And there was some paparazzi dude outside. Now, Chucky right. just sees, like, the flash of the camera. He sees some dude leave. And, like, uh, 10 minutes later, him and his son, you know, they, they drive out son. in some car. And, Are you talking and, about the photographer? No, uh, Chucky's son. They, Chucky's Chuck, son. Yeah, Chucky and his son, they go. Uh, How does Chucky have a son? It, it's a long story. but Oh, boy. Okay, but never so, mind. Keep but talking. So, <laughs> so him and his son go off in this car to catch this photographer but like 10 minutes have passed and he didn't even get a look at the dude, let alone uh, the dude's car. How would he know where this dude's going? But somehow the they, get there, they get there to where, uh, cause this dude, um, cause you know, it's a long time ago. So you have to develop your film. <laughs> so, uh, so, they're in, uh, so they're in the room with this dude while he's developing the film. I'm like, how do they know where to go? Like 10 minutes have passed and he barely got a look at the guy. Like, like how did he know where this guy was going to develop the film at? So he Talking somehow he so so Chucky and his son somehow track down this dude, kill him, and and I, I was just so confused. I'm like, how did they know where to go? Like, is there is there only one place in town to develop photos? But it was their first time in Hollywood, so how would they know where that place is? That just bothers me. <laughs> oh man. Mm -mm. Oh well. Although my Sorry books are not plot hole free, and I could I can point you to some plot holes of my own. Yeah, I, I yeah with stuff like that. I'm just like whatever. I, I you know what it's 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 weird. I think I think when you love something, you're much more critical of it because you want it to be as good as possible. Because um, you know I'm listening to you sort of um, you know complain about all these holes in Chucky, and to me they they don't bother me because I'm not a big Chucky fan. I'm, I, I, I mean, I, I enjoy them. I can enjoy the movies, but I, I, I wouldn't nitpick over them like that. But I know, and I do, I know that I would nitpick if it were, if it were a superhero movie and the same thing happened. That stuff would annoy the heck out of me. And I, th and I think it's because I do love superhero movies and probably the same way you love horror movies. And because of that, my, my, I, have a, I have a very critical eye when it comes to plot holes like that. Right. Um, like, I, like I, I need that stuff explained. I, don't, I, I hate it when I put stuff in movies just like you were explaining that don't make any sense. And even, and even if it's, you know, for me, you, you, you tell me about plot holes in a Chucky movie, I, I can just make up something and, and, and that in my head and it'll explain it for me. It's like, okay, he's a voodoo doll, so... You know, he supernaturally knows where this guy's heading. You know, so, and, and that All satisfies. Spider sense. <laughs> yeah, th that satisfies me. If 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 that happened in a Spider-Man movie and they didn't explain, they didn't explain how something happened, I wouldn't accept some casual explanation like, "Oh, it's his spider sense." If, especially if they didn't show him using his spider sense. I, I would I, I, right. I would demand I would demand an explanation. It's like why? How do you find out? That doesn't make any sense. And I would start ranting and going off like a, like 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 a like like a madman that that someone explained how this happened and why it happened and how come how come how come he didn't know that that was in a room when he doesn't have spider sense and it's blah 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 and how come he took off his mask? How come how come Aunt May snuck up on Stuck up on him right. at the end of that movie, and right. <laughs> you know it's like, dude, dude, I, I think and, people, and, yeah, I, oh, I think I'll, that, I'll, that, that our, our love for whatever genre we're into make get, makes us hypercritical, hypersensitive to things that don't make logical sense. One of the things that bothered me most about Far From Home was, yeah, okay, right. so so this giant water creature is attacking. Right. There must be news cameras everywhere right and he wants to swing around without his mask yeah, no. yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. And 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 no and no one no one catches this. Yeah. No one catches this. But when he's in some some idiotic last second costume, so you know, or, or something like that, you know, that's that's when they catch it. Or like when he puts like some idiotic uh like he finds like some some random like um festive mask lying around, he puts that on his face, and then they catch him. But but you know, that's when they get him on film. But no one yeah. recognizes his clothes or his book bag or or any of that stuff like that yeah. that just that just bugs me yeah. to no end yeah i mean especially especially in a world where everyone has a camera with them on their cell phone everyone's filming this stuff you know so you would think that one person out of, out of the thousands of people you know on on vacation in europe you know right. <laughs> would would capture some of this stuff dude if it were like some dark alleyway i, I wouldn't really care but it's right. broad daylight in the middle of this this tourist attraction yeah. and, and and just no nobody catches that yeah yeah <laughs> every mascara is, is causing trouble he's he, he types in uh, far from home was really well written with a little sly face and he, then he puts tom holland number one spider-man yeah, everyone's got. Oh yeah, he, I mean, my sister hard. agrees with you. <laughs> well, your sister's like ten, so she doesn't know any better. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. yeah. 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 Um, those are awful movies. <laughs> um, Trusty Psychic says I named Gary's new ship, new new show, Ships Log. It's almost as good as when I, when I came up with Nasser Peace Theater. Oh, he came up with the name. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't remember actually who came up with the name. Yeah, uh, I thought it was very funny though when when uh, when they did sort of figure that out, that name out. That's pretty yeah. clever. Not the piece theater. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> the if, if if they were um uh listening to that uh with with the episode where Ethan uh was reading like the throw up story that that's my book uh eternity yeah <laughs> it's, it's on Amazon yeah of course that's the one that I bought unfortunately I was like dang it <laughs> I got to read that <laughs> but I do want to I did want to read your newest book so if that's your newest book that's one I want to read yeah that so. was one I that that was my first story idea I ever came up with it was like you know 2014 or something uh, and then I started to write it in 2017. Then I rage quit, and then I I I finished it in 2018. And then I realized it was absolutely terrible. And then I did the second draft this year. So okay, okay. Well, I will definitely check it out, even though it's not a physical book. <laughs> <laughs> the physical book will be up there soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think I think my my. Uh, next book after that called Duality that, that's coming probably in like September I think uh, yeah. I think that one's probably going to be my best one okay cool yeah hopefully each one is, be is better than the last so that is the goal yeah but uh, I actually got to go for now though <laughs> I got, okay. I got no writing and stuff to do but awesome yeah. talking to you as always dude it's always always fun uh, trashing the new Spider-Man <laughs> movies with you yeah Yes. Well, ho yeah. hopefully, hopefully there won't be any new ones for us to trash, but I'm afraid there will be. Yeah, yeah. There, there's probably going to be some more, but see yeah. you guys. Hey, take care, Nostra. Thanks for stopping right. by. I appreciate it. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Nostra Rabadi, writer extraordinaire. Um, let's see. Uh. Let me see what else is in the chat. Um, Lady Celtic Moon says, uh, trust you, you're not the oldest here. I am. And uh, Evan says, you don't know how old I am, Lady Celtic Moon. Uh, <laughs> Evan must be must be a great grandfather. Yeah. Um, let's see. Things get cut because of time in addition to this. No. Huh. I don't think I missed anything. Oh, top chat. Yeah. Let me go to live chat. I probably missed a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, this is Nasser. Get out of here. Yeah, kick Nasser. Um. <laughs> A 
Okay, yeah, I think I caught up. Cool. So I'm still working on this uh, on this sketch for the for that uh, illustration. Coming along. Let's see. But this should give you the general idea of where I'm heading. Um, Evan says, uh, has Dylan asked you to be on school battle yet? Yes, he has. Um, I just haven't done it because I just haven't had time and, um, I would like to, it sounds interesting. Um, just, uh, you know, I, I either haven't had time or by the time I see his message, um, he's already finished. So, um, it's just a question of timing. I'm not on Twitter that much and he sends the link via Twitter. So. You know, I, I probably go on Twitter. If I'm, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll go on Twitter once a day. Sometimes I don't, I don't go on at all, <laughs> and I'll yeah, you know, it'll be I'll go on maybe twice a week because right? I just have no real interest in Twitter. So. Tuesdays and Fridays at 10 p.m. So it's tomorrow at 10 p.m. Okay, then I will try to remember to make uh, make a point of uh, of going on going on tomorrow, I guess. Um, because I, I or or at the very least, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll watch. Maybe I'll maybe I'll just watch first um, on on John Diller's channel to get an idea of how how it's played and what was about. Because I I mean, I was, he he he's explained it, but I I need to see it sort of in in motion and in action before it really sinks in for me. I understand what's going on. I'm a slow learner, so <laughs> I need visual aids. Uh, oh, it's true. Evan says you can watch a replay too. Yeah, that's that is true, Evan. So I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that later on. Maybe later on tonight I'll do that. I forgot with YouTube, it's not all live. You can just watch it anytime you want. You don't have to actually be watching it as it happens. Yeah. And everyone, thank you uh, for whoever's still here. Thanks for watching my live stream. I appreciate it. Um, first like I said, yeah, I watched one of the replays today. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check it out. I will definitely have to check it out. Um, yeah, if you haven't already, please, uh, please give this video a thumbs up, uh, this live stream. And, um, and if, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, and hit the bell for notifications of future videos. And, uh, if you could, please share out the video to, uh, to Twitter, and Facebook, and, uh, and, uh, other social media outlets out there let people know that uh that i do these uh, a few times a week and uh yeah hopefully the channel will continue growing and i'll continue to uh be producing stuff that people are interested in seeing
I think we got Tiana with a hashtag, says uh, Evan. Uh, what hashtag do you think brought in Tiana, um, Evan? It'd be cool if, if, it, if it did, if it, if it worked. That's why I was asking her um, how she found us, um, how she found the live stream. So it'd be very cool if it worked. Um, Trusty Second says, it was fun, Evan. I, I watched part of the movies episode. Maybe drawing. Yeah, okay, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Evan says, I let them win, trust. You always let them win. You're very, you're very gracious, uh, Evan. Too much, too much. Too much. Okay, um, I think that's it for now. Um, this is this is pretty much the layout that I want for for this this cartoon. Um, and I'll do some further refinement once I start working on the final thing, but it's generally the the idea that I wanted, um, you know, morning cat, morning, not as in, in morning, not in the morning. You, you know what I mean. <laughs> Cats at a funeral here. Um, you know, dogs digging up holes in the background here. And, uh, and then the cat, one cat saying to, I guess his wife next to him was saying, I, I told you we should have gone to the pet crematorium instead of just burying the, the cat, I mean, in the backyard. So that is the, that's the gag of the, uh, of this, this one strip. Uh, let's see. 
Um, Evan says, uh, how do you like being on the show, Bullet? Uh, Bullet says, I love it. It's just dumb fun. Oh, good. Very cool. Awesome. Well, okay. Well, everyone, thank you very much for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, thanks to Nostra for coming on and, uh, and uh, spending some time with all of us and uh, help keep, help keep, helping, keeping me company. Uh, I just want to, uh, again, encourage everyone, actually in 10 minutes, um, on Chester Busby's channel is Drawn and Quarter Fan Edition. So everybody should head on over there, check it out, and uh, and uh, just uh, give her, give the artist there your support. They're going to be drawing the new um, Indiegogo comic character, Mary Sue. So it should be a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this live stream with me uh, doing, uh, doing a sketch. And, uh, if you haven't already, please, uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, give this video a thumbs up, share it out to all your friends and, uh, family and the internet in general, and, uh, hit the bell for notifications of future videos. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, not sure when I'm going to be live streaming next. Um, it's going to be soon because I need to do, um, two more of these sketches. Um, so, it might be tonight, might be tomorrow, but it'll be sometime soon. So again, hit the bell for notifications and make sure that you check your settings, that your notifications are set for all. Uh, if they're not set for all, A-L-L, um, you might only be getting some of your notifications of videos that you've uh, subscribed to. So uh, just make sure it's set for all so that whenever I post a new video or do another live stream, you guys will get a heads up from, uh, from YouTube, okay? Thanks everyone for uh, for hanging out. Thanks for your support, and uh, I will uh, I will talk to you later on. Um, Precious sidekicks with later gators. Bullet says thanks to everyone, but Nasser. <laughs> and Evan says special thanks to Tiana. Yeah, yeah. Thanks Tiana again for showing up and for subscribing and for uh, adding your uh, you know your thoughts and input. We're we're very happy to have you here. Hope to see you again. Okay, you guys take care, and I will talk to you soon. Go over to Chester Buzzfeed channel and uh, support those guys. Okay, thanks a lot.